Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by, Lord. Don't pass me by. You will touch my life one more time. My life will change. He will touch my life one more time. My life will become a brand new one. Jehovah will touch my life one more time. My life will change. Amen. I need a touch, Lord. My life, Lord. My life become a brand new one. Jehovah will touch my life one more time. My life will change. You will touch my life one more time. My life will change. You will touch my life one more time. My life will become a brand new one. Jehovah will touch my life one more time. My life will change here tonight. Touch my life one more time. My life will change. You touch my life one more time. My life will become a brownie one. You touch my life one more time. My life will change. I can see the glory of the Lord descending in a mist and breaking every yoke. I can see the glory of the Lord descending in a mist and breaking every yoke, every yoke. Descending in a mist and breaking every yoke. Can you see? I can see his glory yet tonight, descending in a mist and breaking every oar. I can feel the glory of the Lord descending in a mist and breaking every yoke. I can see the glory of the Lord descending in a mist and breaking every yoke. Yes, tonight. The glory of the Lord. Yes, I can see. In a mist and breaking every yoke, I can see the glory of the Lord descending in a mist and breaking every yoke. Tonight, 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 the Lord will visit me tonight, tonight, tonight. Tonight, the Lord will visit me tonight. Tonight, I will never let you go. I will never let you go unless you bless. Oh Lord, I will never let you go unless you touch me. I will never let you go unless you. Lord, I will never let you go unless you heal me. I will never let you go unless you bless me. I will never let you go unless you answer me. I will never let you go. Touch him and be made all. Touch him. Now, just now, he will hear your cry. So touch him and be made all. Touch him now. Touch him now and be made all. The Son of God is passing by. Now, just now, he will hear. Your cry, so, so touch him and be made all. Touch him and be made all. Touch him and be made all. The soul 
touch him now. Touch him now. Oh, 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 the Son of God is passing away. Now, just now, he will hear your cry. So touch him and be the power. The power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today, no matter what they say. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today, oh yes. Power, Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. Oh yes, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today and here tonight. The power, Pentecostal power, is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. Lord, send the hot time power, how Pentecostal power, thou floods gates of blessing, all of trouble wide. Lord, send the old time power, how Pentecostal power that sinners be converted and thy name glorify send the power lost and the old time power oh lord a pentecostal power thou flood gates of blessing on us Lord send the old time power how Pentecostal power that seen us be converted and I name glorified Lord us of old at Pentecost thou didst thy power display with cleansing purifying flame descend on us today Lord send the old time power our Pentecostal power the flood gates of blessings on us trouble wide Lord send the old time power our Pentecostal power that seen us be converted and thy name glorified all self consume all sin destroy with an zeal and deal each waiting heart to work for thee O oh lord how faith renew lord send the old time power how pentecostal power the flood gates of hell, oh Lord, drop wide, Lord, send the old time power, our pain. 
Pentecost star power thou seen us be converted and your name glorify I can see the glory of the Lord descending in a mist and breaking every yoke, every yoke. I can see the glory of the Lord descending in a mist. Open your heaven, let your power come. Open your heaven, let your power come. Hold up, heaven, let your power come. Hold up, we're with you, Lord. Let your power come, let your glory come, let deliverance come, let your healing flow, let salvation come, let your blessing come, let your spirit fall, open your heaven, open your heaven, Lord. Let your power come, Lord, open your heaven, let revival come, open your heaven, let your power flow here tonight, heaven, let your power come, hold on, hold on, let your power fall. Let your glory come, let deliverance come, let your healing come, let revival come, let your glory come, let your power fall, let revival come. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we please. Mercy drop round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, showers, showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the shower sweetly, there shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be season refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Oh Lord, come down and manifest thy power. Oh Lord, come down come and manifest your power oh lord come down come and manifest your power
Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that you give us real faith, abiding faith, transforming faith, saving faith, sanctifying faith, empowering faith in Jesus' name. We pray that our faith will not be dead. Our faith will not be shallow. Our faith will not be traditional. Our faith will not be theoretical. It will be faith that works by love in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to James chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. James chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? What does it profit, brothers and sisters and children of God? Though a man says he has saving faith and he does not have the fruit of that saving faith. A man says he has sanctifying faith and he does not have the proof and the evidence of that sanctifying faith. A man says he has a transforming faith, a faith that comes into life and transforms that life, changes that life, and we cannot see the evidence of a changed life. What does it profit then, brothers and sisters, where a man may say, it does profession, it does expression that has no experience, that has no deep root in the faith. It says, if a man says, he professes, he has faith, and he has not works, he has no deeds, he has no doing, he has no fruit, he has no proof, can that faith save him? If you say you are forgiven, prove it by the life you live. If you say you are saved, prove it by the life you live. If you say you believe in the Lord and that you have turned away from the world and you have turned... ...expression by the exploits you do through that empowering faith. In verse 15, if a brother or your sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things those things that prove that you love them. Those things that prove that you have practical faith. Those things that prove that you have the faith to back up your expression of blessing. God bless you. God bless you. Depart in peace and be warm and feed. Notwithstanding, you give them not the things which are needful to the body, needful to its existence, and needful to its health, and needful to its satisfaction, and needful to a life well worth living. What does it profit? Even so, faith. If it has not works, even so face, if it does not have fruit, even so face, if it does not have practical evidences, dead being alone, yeah. a man may say, that was face. And I have worked 
what kind of fruit I bear. If that faith is great, you see the kind of fruit I bear. If that faith is permanent, perennial, always there, you'll see from the outward expression of my life that that faith is there, is always present there, and it is preeminent there, and it is permanent there. It says, I will show you my faith by my works, by the things I do. That believers, there is one God, okay, that does well, but please understand, the devils also believe there is one God and they tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, unprofitable man, shallow man, religious but not righteous man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham a father justified, revealed by works, established by works? made known that is a friend of God by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar do you see seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect by works faith was made matured, faith was made evident, and faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God, called the friend of God. And was like his friend, God. God is active. He was active. And God is profitable. He was profitable. God is loving. He was loving. God is dependable. He was dependable. And God is faithful. And the man was faithful. You see then how that by works a man is justified, not by faith only not by empty faith standing in isolation by itself. Likewise also was not Rehab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and sent them out another way, for as the body without the spirit is dead, what will they hand do? you? Without the spirit, in a it proves dead. And what will the mouth say? How can the mouth talk without the spirit? And the silent mouth is the evidence that the death has taken place. And the immovable feet never going anywhere, just stagnant, just dead. It's an evidence the spirit is gone out. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Where there is faith, there'll be accompanying works. Where there is faith, there will be abiding works. Where there is faith, there will be appropriate works. And it is brought out in that line of the song, if you say you are forgiven, if you say you are saved, if you say you have met the Lord and you are connected with the Lord, stop saying, stop professing, prove it by the life you live. There is lively faith, faith that makes you come alive. People did not know you before. You didn't touch anybody's life before. You didn't turn anything around before. You didn't receive anything from heaven before. But now you have faith and we can tell, we can see there's a living, abiding, appropriate faith that brings out 
works that brings out fruit, that brings out the expression that leads to the experience on the other hand and uh, there is dead faith it's in active it does nothing it makes no change in a man there's no transformation there's no difference between the past and the present just dead as a dead man does not move, he does not move. As a dead man does not cry, he does not cry. As a dead man does not laugh, he does not laugh. As a dead man does not do anything and remains in that place, is helpless. You have to carry him. And there's only one place you can carry him to. You carry him to the grave. So dead faith has no action. Dead faith has no activity, and dead faith has no evidence by which we'll know that faith is there. And as you count the population of a country, and you don't count the dead men, you do not count dead faith as anything. As you are counting the number of your children, and you don't count those ones who have died, so is dead faith. You cannot count those who have dead faith among the children of God. There's lively faith, there's active faith, there's productive faith, and there is practical positive, progressing faith. On the other hand, there's an active faith that is totally dead. Dead faith characterizes dead souls. Dead faith characterizes dead backsliders. Dead faith characterizes dead church people, church members. They have nothing to show for the faith they profess, I pray your faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will be active. My faith will be loving. My faith will produce good abiding fruit. Yours will do in Jesus' name. Today we come to the message, the convincing proof of saving our faith. The convincing proof of saving faith. There are three things we're looking at as we look at this passage. Number one, the emptiness and deadness of faith without works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Point number two, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. The works we do, the deeds we produce, the life we live, the things we give to other people, and the sacrifice we make unto God, the expression of our faith in works, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. Number three, the exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. The exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. Number one, the emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Come back to James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Look at verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 26. For the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. Faith 
without works is dead also. And when it says faith without works is dead also, actually, the one who possesses only faith, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone, faith is the key. And faith is what I have. But there is no works, there are no deeds, there is no fruit, there's no transformation. And the fruit of the Spirit is not there. Obedience to the Word of God is not there. He's saying that man is a dead man. Dead face, dead follower. I'm following Christ, but he has dead face. I'm one of the faithful members of the body of Christ, but he has dead face. The man is dead. Look at the scriptures. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said unto him, Behold, He is my personal savior, but I have another man's wife with them. And you hear the word of God that this is what you do. Give the woman to her husband. No, they don't want to do that. I believe in God already. And my faith in God cancels every activity and cancels obedience. Abimelech, behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 16. Proverbs 21, verse 16. The man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. There is a congregation in the sight of God, is the congregation of the dead. Why? Well, they say they follow Christ. They say they believe in Christ. They say it was at a crusade that they raised up their hands and they became believers. It says, but no. He wanders away from the path of understanding. He wanders away from the understanding of Scripture. Whenever you talk about duty, whenever you talk about the fruit of repentance, and whenever you talk about the evidence of salvation, he says, I don't know about that. I don't want to know about that. All I know is I believe in Christ. I have faith in Christ. But he is in the congregation of the dead. He has dead faith. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 5. We're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. She doesn't accept the message of the word of God. He that will be and she that will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. She doesn't accept, he doesn't accept the word of the Lord. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I believe in God. I don't care about, I can look like the world and drink like the world and I can do everything the world is doing. All I know is, I believe, I believe, I believe in Christ. Dead faith produces a dead man. Dead faith produces a dead woman. And dead faith produces a dead nominal Christian. Dead faith produces 
a dead nominal church goer. But she that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. tells us there from the leaves of Jesus Christ himself and unto the angel of the church in Sadi's right what a name what a title angel what a position what a privilege angel and what recognition angel to the angel of the churches that is right this thing says he that has the seven she was doing before conversion so called and the thing she was doing, he was doing, before he said, I place my faith in Christ. And the Lord looks at that and he says, I know your works. But we say that faith without works is dead. And this person already has works. And Jesus is saying, as a name that thou livest and art dead. And look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from, tell me, dead works, dead works. There are dead works, the dead in the mind. works and jesus said i know your works what kind of works so dead it makes you dead even though you claim to be alive hebrews chapter 9. even though you claim to be alive hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from, tell me, dead works. I'm sure you found people who try, but you know, when the faith is dead, 
if the other seen is dead. I don't want people to know that, you know, I'm just a dead log of wood. That I don't have the spirit. And I don't have the joy, the joy of living and the excitement of living for God. And they try, they try to copy the believer. They try to copy the saints, but it doesn't work. It falls down flat. The voice is dead. You're hearing something, but there's no power. And there's no spirit, and there's no inspiration, and there's no enlightenment from what you're hearing. They're just trying to do something, trying to say something. It's dead. And that's why the Lord said that there are people that claim to have faith, but the faith standing alone. The faith by itself does not have the fruit. It is dead because it has no works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I read from verse 2, Isaiah 58, reading from verse 2, Faith without works. I may follow up Jesus Christ. We've heard that for too long. Stop saying, start doing, show that faith. Demonstrate that faith. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1, cry aloud. Spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, as a nation, like a nation, this copycat, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light in approaching to God. And yet it says, cry aloud and lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. They claim to be saved, but they're still sinners. They claim to have faith, saving faith, but they still have sinful lifestyle. Isaiah chapter 29, reading from verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13, wherefore the Lord said, as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, they say with their mouth, they profess just with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You can tell. All they have is um, faith that is dead, making a profession, but not having the reality of the life. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 4. It says in verse 4, moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall they turn away and not return? It's talking about people that were saved before, long ago. But eventually, 
they fell into sin. And maybe the sin is known to other people. Maybe the sin is not known to other people. They just find that on their own voluntarily, they withdraw from the congregation of the people of God. Where you used to see them, you cannot see them. And when you meet them on the way, you still say, sister, sister. When you meet them on the way, you still say, brother, brother. They carry the name. They lost the nature. They carry the title. But there's no transformation again. It says they are falling and they refuse to rise up. They turn away and they refuse to return. Why then is this people of Jerusalem sliding back by perpetual backsliding? They're still at Jerusalem. They're still at the headquarters. But there's perpetual permanent backsliding. They hold fast the siege and they refuse to return. They deceive themselves and they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they speak not aright. No man repented of his wickedness. They say, I'm still all right. I'm still in the faith. I still believe. I have only one God. This God is my God. And this Jesus is my savior. But they have not repented of the weakness they fell into, saying, what have I done? They have not said that. Everyone turned to his own cause as the horse rushes into the battle. Yea, the stock in the heaven knows her appointed times, and it touches uh, the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do you say? How do you say? We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pain of the scribe is in vain. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, but they are ashamed when they have committed abomination. These people say they have faith. You find them in the offices. You find them in your community. You find them in your neighborhood. They profess faith. And yet when they commit abomination, there's no shame. They're used to it. Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Look at their lamentation on the final day, in the final verses of that chapter. In verse 20, the harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not sick. They realize too late. Although they have been claiming they had faith, they had faith, no works, no fruit, no deeds, no approval of their lives. The good they want to do, they cannot do. The evil they don't want to do is exactly what they do because the faith cannot produce saving works. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people and my heart, I am black. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered. How do you describe such people? We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, having a form of godliness, 
but denying the power thereof, the power to be godly, the strength to be godly, the grace to be godly, righteous. They don't have, but they have a form of godliness. You can see that form in their outward expression. You can do that without living faith, lively faith, abiding faith, saving faith. You can see that they sing the songs, they quote the scriptures, and they appear to be among the people of God. They have a form of godliness, but deny the path thereof from such.